with Senator Kevin Dillon of South Port. Um, there's two famous quotes surrounding the Affordable uh, Care Act, and one maybe not so famous. President Obama said that the premiums would drop $2,500 if it passed. Nancy Pelosi said, pass the bill and we'll see what's in it. And maybe not so famous in my research, allegedly you said, I read the bill, I read it twice, I understand it, every piece of it. I was at a uh, town hall meeting this morning, uh, for about a three hour meeting with the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the Board of Finance in Fairfield. And last year they told us that there were maybe a dozen people that showed up at this meeting. Today there was a couple of hundred back then. And the reason was the uh, tax rate that was going to be proposed by the town was about a six and a half percent <coughs> tax increase. And a lot of it is the same drivers locally that it is nationally. Uh, healthcare. Uh, the taxpayers pay the town's uh, employees health benefits. And the cost is $22,000 per employee. I pay my insurance uh, directly uh, to Anthony. My insurance last year went from $18,000 to $24,000. We heard this week a number of announcements from a uh, number of insurance companies. Edna announced that they were going to raise the price up to 55%. Blue Cross Blue Shield, 40 to 45%. Uh, there was another one, I forget the name, uh, United Health was up to potentially 116%. We're hearing about businesses that are right around 50, that aren't going to hire that 50th person because that puts them into a different class of insurance. We're hearing about businesses that are uh, letting people go uh, off the insurance plan, they're just going to pay the penalty. Uh, I'm trying to figure out, oh, and then yesterday, the Senate repeals uh, the medical device tax. I agree with it, um, but it was part of it was a bill, part of the bill that never should have been in there. This bill, in my view, was rushed and, and, and done not the way it ought to be done. Explain to me, yeah, I'm not right here. Uh, explain to me why uh, the Affordable Care Act is not a bad bill and will at some point do all the things that we've heard uh, promises. So, uh, so thank you for the, thank you for the question. Um, so here's the disconnect, and I'm not going to lie, but there's a disconnect here. Since the Affordable Care Act went into effect, we have seen historic reductions in the rate of health care spending in this country. We are spending less money on health care um, in terms of an annual percentage rate increase than we've seen in 20 years, and it's not being reflected in insurance prices. And that is the frustration of every single member of Congress who supported this because the Affordable Care Act has been successful in restraining health care costs in this country. Insurance companies are not passing, are not passing along that benefit to consumers um, right now. Uh, and so the, 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 data, the data is the data in terms of if you look at, um, if you look at the rates of increase in health care spending in this country, health care spending has, it still increased, but it increases at a much lower level than it has uh, historically, and insurance companies uh, continue to pass along rate increases that frankly don't have justification based on their costs. Um, and so uh, this is going to be the challenge of building a system um, based on private companies who can charge rates that sometimes are independent of what the data uh, shows underneath it. Um, the benefit of the bill, though, is real. Um, now remember, the bill doesn't go into effect in most parts until 2014, so a lot of the rate increases that you're talking about now are before a lot of the provisions of the bill go into effect. But we've seen some of the most important things already go into effect. We've seen the fact that seniors in Medicare now don't have to pay out of their pocket for uh, preventative care, uh, that young people can stay on their parents' plan until they're 26 in 2014 when the bill does go into effect, but millions of Americans have never had access to health care insurance because they were sick, because they had a disease, or because they just didn't make enough money that will finally have access to it. Um, I'm not going to tell you that there's not going to be some, um, some disruption in the marketplace as this goes into effect. And particularly, I'll say this, that one of the things that the bill does is it, um, it evens out risk. Uh, and so there will be, what we're hearing from the insurance companies is that there will temporarily perhaps be some rate increases, uh, maybe big initial rate increases for some younger, um, healthier individuals because we're going to spread risk in a different way than we do and we're not going to lop it all on top of sick people. Um, and I'm open to looking at the bill to try
try to make changes to adjust for that increase because there's going to be some unforeseen circumstances that come out of this. Um, that's what happens when you do a major rewrite to the healthcare code, and I'm going to be willing to work with individuals and small businesses to make changes to perfect the bill. Um, I'm not in support of repealing it. And ultimately, um, I think the biggest challenge is the one you identified. How do you take the underlying data that tells you that healthcare costs are more stable than they've ever been, and how do you translate that into um, into healthcare insurance rates that uh, that reflect it? Well, I can tell you that the insurance companies blame you guys. Yeah, no, I got you. <laughs> I, I, you're right to be skeptical, right? That's exactly how it sounds, right? So.